Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some more Rome 2 Total War for you today and yes we've had a little bit of a break from Rome 2 obviously because of 12.12 with the major update, we've been covering that a lot so I feel like we've got to go back to a bit of Rome 2, give it a bit more love, it's a great game and we've got some great sieges uh, for you in the next few days that I have uh, accumulated and they are some amazing sieges and here is the first of uh, those and it is a, uh, it's a 4v4 and uh, yeah it is a uh, an excellent one, put it like that. It is a brilliant one. And you can see I paused it straight away because, uh, well, we have a little bit of a sally out here by some uh, Illyrian raiders. They're going to try and go after this uh, Greek giant ballista, as you can see here. I'm just hiding behind towers, actually. I've just realized it can't even fire directly. It'll be destroying the towers. Um, but yeah, this is a brilliant one sent in by a member of the Discord and who said it comes down literally to who has, who runs out of ammo first. So uh, definitely stick around to see how this one goes down. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll get this one underway and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So as you can see with these Illyrian Raiders, I'm just going to go straight after the uh, Greek giant ballista. As they desperately try to load their thing, They're like, look quickly men, load it, load it. And you can see the Javis are coming in and the Illyrian Raiders are back there. And I don't know if they've, uh, like, been spotted, these Lyrian Raiders, by the uh, Seleucids. Because it is the Seleucids being attacked here. Um, and yes, they have. Carthage has sent his uh, general's bodyguard, and he's going to try and deal with these guys. So, the, yeah, the G Greek giant blister might get out of this. Uh, yeah, it looks like it will get out of there with the crew. So it was a, a risky move here. But this is still a risky move, sending the general in. Carthage could accidentally lose his general in this uh, little fight that's going on down here. Unlikely, but he could. He's going to try and pull him out. He's lost no men in that charge. And now this uh, Illyrian Raider is able to kind of just run around where it fancies it. It's only lost five men in fairness. It's actually a hardy, a hardy like unit, these Illyrian Raiders. Uh, I mean, there are some uh, Samonite warriors coming out to deal with them now. And I imagine they're going to try yet. Yeah, look at these Illyrian Raiders. They're desperately trying to get away from these uh, Samonite warriors. Like, no, spare us. But then there's some Hellenic cataphracts that are going to come. And they're going to get finished here in the woods. And there they go. Knocked down by all these cataphracts. And this is where this brave unit dies. I mean, they got no support. They're out here in the sticks on their own. What are they to do? What are they to do? Those brave, brave men. Are, yeah, they're getting, actually, they're getting rear charged as well by the uh, Sam Knights and the uh, General's Bodyguard here of uh, of Carthage. But yes, if you're enjoying seeing 12-12 at the moment, I would like to earn 12-12. Uh, if you're enjoying seeing uh, Road 2 at the moment, it shows how much I'm doing 12-12 because uh, I'm clear my commentary for Rome 2 is just destroyed. Um, but yeah, if you're enjoying seeing Rome 2 at the moment, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. Um, and obviously, if you're enjoying seeing 12-12 as well, also like and sub. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, yeah, as you can see, Seleucids, um, Gete, and Colchis here are the uh, uh, the attackers, along with obviously Carthage. We have Ariadai, who we've seen send out as Illyrian raiders. We've uh, got Boei, we've got uh, Kush, and we've got Pergamon, who are um, who are defending today. And you can see there's actually a tiny little unit here of noble swords that's going to get killed off uh, by Pergamon. We can't really see it unless we just remove the uh, foliage, then we can see it. Yeah, there's a Gete Noble like uh, unit here, but this is actually uh, very well done here by Gete, you could say. I mean, it will lose this very elite and expensive unit, but they now know about Car uh, not Carthage, uh, about Pergamon coming around here, and Carthage can prepare. So, if anything, this like ruse by Pergamon sallying out his entire army has been undone by this one unit of uh, like Gete Noble swords, which they need to really surround, I'd say. A lot of action going on here. Early doors. See, this this uh, get a sword unit might save many lives with its sacrifice. You don't know. It may do. It may not. They're actually falling back their glacian swords, which are starting to lose. But they're surrounding with uh, gl more glacian swords and again with spears. Um, but yeah, you can see over here, Pergamon's selling out ready. And it looks like you're going to try and take on Carthage. I mean, it's probably not a bad one to take on. You could, they could probably be better taking on um, Colchis. But uh, Carthage is not a bad opponent for them to try and take on. As you can see here, 
Seleucid and Legete and uh, Colchis are already nearly at the walls. Seems like uh, Gete's got a very small army. I presume the rest is hidden in this uh, forest over here that we cannot see. Same with Carthage. Um, but yeah, you can see we've got a lot of Libyan infantry getting ready to uh, face up against like, a Gemma Spears. A Gemma Spears spam is a uh, very, very popular uh, strategy with some of my uh, subs and uh, members of the Discord. They enjoy like using a Pergamon spam. Some people don't rate it and don't recognize it. We were playing some games uh, recently and uh, someone was uh, making comment at the selection of Pergamon. Like, seriously, Pergamon and a siege uh, and defending? And like, yeah, it's, it works. And certainly with these funds, like the funds that like you can use, uh, you don't have to have an expensive army for Pergamon to make it an effective army. And there you go, these noble swords are finished. We cut down and there we go, we can put the foliage back on now. But as you can see, the uh, attackers have now got inside the walls. We now have uh, some Seleucid Thorax Swords dropping in off their siege tower. And they're getting focused down already by archers. I don't know if that was the idea of these Nubian bowmen here. Already firing. They might want to hold their fire. Wait for a better angle because uh, this is not the greatest angle in the world. Yeah, these guys are getting battered. Shields up, man. It's kind of like 300 a bit. I mean, they need more arrows for it to be like 300, but... They're just standing here accepting the arrows. Jeez, that's nasty. And uh, yeah, we're still waiting on the first bit of combat, though. You can imagine, yeah, it's very, very quickly. Cartley Axman going in for Colchis. Don't often see Colchis in uh, siege battles. Don't often see them in Rome 2. You know, it's nice to see them being reused. They're up against uh, Ariadai, probably the best opponent they could be up against. Ariadai matches quite well against uh, against Colchis. Two pretty low tier factions facing off against each other. This obviously could work in favour of Cartley, of Cartley, of Colchis. Sorry, it's because they got a Cartley Axman unit. Um, this could work in favour of uh, Colchis because uh, obviously they're going to get more money, so they uh, could overwhelm Ariadai. But Ariadai is a solid defending force. It would be really good if, for the attackers if they can like overwhelm the defenders here and then just uh, lock Pergamon out of their own city. But yeah, that's a really good angle. This uh, Thorax Sword here getting absolutely ripped to shred it in the flanks as it tries to attack the Shoto Warrior unit. Which it's never going to do anyway. Shoto's are just nasty anyway. Hard to kill. And they can kill very well. They're very good at armor piercing. They're better on the fence though, I think. You like defending with car... Uh, with, um, with Kush is really, really, uh, not hard, but it's not as effective, put it like that. I feel like you've got to be an aggressive defender if you play Kush. Like, this standing in shield wall is possibly not the best way to use Shotel Warriors, I'd have thought. Yeah, they're losing slightly, actually, you see this. They're getting shot on the flank, that's why. They're getting shot by uh, these Syrian heavy archers back here. Got uh, artillery coming in, and that's just firing down. I think that actually hit, might hit a lot of uh, Colchis troops there. Might be wrong. But I'm pretty sure that was more friendly fire than uh, than anything else. And it looks like, I mean, they're overwhelming this uh, Illyrian throw spear here quite easily, these Kali Axemen. They need to stop firing this. Look at that. Look at all that damage just done. That was mostly Colchis troops there. I think entirely Colchis troops. And they just annihilated their own units. You need to be careful when using that explosive ammo. They've overwhelmed Bowie's first uh, line of defense from Celtic Warriors. It's now some Morgue being sent in. And these Kali Axemen are just ripping them to shreds. Carly Axemen are a very underrated unit, especially when they're chevroned up, they can be very, very effective. I think they're blowing up here, though, a bit too much. This is one, two, three units here. I mean, uh, Mercenary Axe Warriors, you've got Carly Axemen actually losing decisively, and more Carly Axemen here. And, um, yeah, I think they're loot. they've got too much there. That's a risk for uh, missile fire. Obviously, though, the, most of the fire missile fires can be on these Noble Swords, which is just ripping through these lightly armed Celtic Warriors. I do feel bad for Bowie Eye here. Is uh, his weak line is being overwhelmed quite easily. What have we got here? This is 
This is some Mercenary Axe uh, Warriors. You guys are actually losing to the Celtic Swords. And look, the uh, Shoto Warriors, they've actually lost their first unit here, I think. Um, and they're now in the center for second one. Already burning through sh uh, like Shotel units. Oh no, it's here. Look, it's all the way up here. It's trying to be aggressive. Like I said, it's the best play to play like uh, Kush is be aggressive, I think. But uh, it's a bit of a risk. It's a very big risk. Obviously, I think they want to engage with this unit here and they want to recapture this tower. It's, I don't know why they're really too worried. These towers aren't as great as they are in Attila. But yeah, this uh, Shotel Warrior unit is going to be able to engage here. Oh, it's a nasty jabby throw from the uh, Thor Spears there. Look at all those poor dead Kush troops. And then in it goes. And yeah, these guys are going to have a probably an easiest time fighting down here. With a nice little aerial view. I mean, Kush has got a lot of stuff set up still. I mean, he's got a lot of good units still. Got a lot of Shotel, a lot of armored Shotel. It's going to be interesting to see. How is Pergmon doing? Pergamon now is in his fight now with uh, Carthage. Let's remove the foliage so we can see what's going on. He is actually in his uh, fight over here. And he's got a lot of uh, Agema Spears. They're doing okay against these Libyan infantry. He needs to be using a lot of his Javis, as you can see here. Look at this. Agema Spears into the back of these Libyan infantry. Like, jabbing into the back. And they're causing the uh, Libyan infantry to lose. So this is going to be huge. I like how I get rid of the foliage and there's still like a billion ferns that you can like. And like Kush hasn't even got, oh not Kush, uh, Carthage hasn't even got his entire army here. So like Pergon's been able to take it out piecemeal by piecemeal. Look at all the Javis as well. This is what a Game of Spears can do. Just Javi you to death. Sacred Band getting destroyed. A Game of Spears here now facing them off. These Sacred Band are going to have a rough old time being Javied in the back. And here comes some uh, some Samnite Warriors. They're going to try and engage these uh, these. Uh, I don't want to call everyone Kush today. Um, they're going to try and engage these Pergamon troops. But they're going to retreat. Pergamon's not having any of it. It looks like Kolk is bringing his uh, Noble Blood Cavalry over. Look at this. They're going to like push in this Samnite Warrior unit. And it's actually going to just get Jared from all flanks. Uh, we've got Glacians breaking on this side though. It looks like... I mean, it looks like they're doing okay on this side as Pergamon. I mean, they're going to... They've beaten that Glacians all there of these uh, living infantry. So they can flank around here. And they can cause these uh, glaciers to break. And then they can work their way down the line. So Pergamon might be at risk here of uh, getting overwhelmed. He needs to get some uh, some major wins soon from his side. Sacred Band getting forced back there. You can see these Samnite Warriors now trying to catch these uh, Agamem Spears. And they're going to do so successfully. There you go. Looks quite nice without the foliage on. Looks like it's very wintry, like it is currently here in Britain. Uh, it's so cold. Uh, but as you can see here, Kush being aggressive, as he should be. I think Kush has got to play an aggressive uh, game if he wants to do well. Like, he can't just stand back and let his show tells get shot. It's just not going to work. And I mean, these Shotel are going to just mince through these Thorax. Thorax just do not do well when they're fighting uh, Shotel Warriors. Though this one is starting to get surrounded slowly. You need to be careful. I mean, they're jabbing into the back with the Shotel Warrior unit. Jabbing all these poor hillmen. That cannot be helping. There you go, the Hillman break. Just leaving the uh, Thorax to deal with them. I mean, you can see Kush is really pushing out now. And it looks like uh, what we've got now, Bowie Eye sending up better stuff. Axe Warriors, I mean, I say they're better. They're still wavering pretty quickly. Uh, we've now got some pretty elite noble hot plates down here for um, for Ariadai. I mean, he's actually got a unit looking the wrong way. I don't know if he needs to sort that out. Uh, actually, he saw, almost certainly does. I'll be firing that artillery. Where's that explosive artillery? Explosive artillery shots in here, please. Um, I believe it's this one here. Yeah, Colchis's. 
He needs to just fire straight into this big blob here with uh, Aridite troops. There's only a tiny unit of Gete Axe Warriors in here. It's not that small. Um, and then they're actually flanking around here are the Illyrian Marines. I have to flank around these uh, Carly Axemen are getting surrounded. I don't know if they're actually flanking around or they're pulling through, more likely. Looks more like they're pulling through to me. That's not okay, pulling through. Shouldn't pull through in game. And look what we got here. Noble hot plates coming up. They're going to try and face these Carly Axemen. Don't know if they should be being aggressive. It should be Kush being the aggressor and obviously Pergamon at the moment. You can see that they're burning through a lot of uh, Seleucid's troops. He's now bringing up his silver, silver shield swords um, from the woods, his reserves. What's he got here? Thorax pikes. Uh, I'd push back if I was uh, Kush. I don't think there's enough up here now to fight. There's some shield bearers and some Thoros spears. Uh, it's, it's an interesting one. And I mean, Bowie Eye's got a lot of uh, res reserves that are really elite, though. He's got a lot of those one that are good. So he clearly, like, just brought himself some cheap stuff. I mean, Sword Follows is a cheap but effective as well. Um, he's brought a lot of Sword Follows, and then he's also brought, like, Bowie Eye's just, like, got a lot of those one. They'll, they'll get a lot of kills. As you can see down here, Aridai still fighting on hard against Col Colchis. for a little while I imagine you can hear the artillery's firing and they are actually are focusing down this area here I think because they have seen the huge blobs of like noble hot plates going on uh, yeah I mean it's still okay to go after this is, there is quite a lot of noble swords in here uh, guess is actually landing more there are actually plenty more guess a troops there are so many more a lot of armored spears I would have not brought armored spears probably would have brought I mean they're sending in their noble swords before they're actually sending in the rest of the mercy axe warriors um, which it's kind of interesting because these noble swords are really good. Like, I mean, really good. They should probably save the rest of them. Send in maybe some of those spears. Who knows? Back over on this side. Looks like Carthage is winning. Uh, yeah, looks like Pergamon's falling back, constantly falling back. And with the help of, like, Colchis over here with his general. I mean, his generals actually could be in risk of dying. He needs to be careful. Like, charging, like, Cav at, like... A Javi heavy army is a very risky move. Uh, you can see these Libyan infantry. They're going to just get mopped up by the egg. They get them spears. And yeah, there they go. They force them back. And they I mean, they should just not... They need to fall back this unit because, look, there's just so much more. They need to fall back inside the city. They've done their damage. Um, like, not the facade, but the, uh, like, the axe up. And they need to get back inside desperately. I mean, they haven't killed enough all, uh, like any really important stuff. They haven't killed pikes or anything like that. They possibly get this general for Colchis. They can get this general for Colchis. Big win. But uh, Colchis' general is going to run down this Galatian sword like it wasn't even there. These poor, poor men. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, well, actually, Galatian can't get out of there. Or Galatian swords can't get out of there. Because they're dead. Uh, this is Game of Spear, looks like we sacrificed. They need to get everything here back. I mean, now Colchis has the decision. Does, this use, does he use his general to slow down Pergmon and, like, trap an entire army outside the walls? Because I think Carthage can finish him. Carthage could finish um, Pergmon right now. Or does he save his general and save his army from routing and let Pergamon get back inside. He's got a choice. It's a do or die, really, lit quite literally. But I think Pergamon's quite interested in not going back inside the walls and trying to kill Colchis' general, which is not a bad idea. Surprised that, like, Pergamon didn't bring any cavalry. Could have really helped pin down this general. I would have got some good hammer and anvils, because there were options for that um, going up against Carthage. Needs to send some of these. Uh, yeah, look at this. You can see there's a Gemma Spear here. This one in particular, beelining for the red line. And I think it'll make it. It'll suddenly get into Javi range, I think, before this uh, Noble Cavalry here is going to make it. It's, they're tired now. What are these guys at? Active. Ooh, it's going to be close. One good Javi throw, and these guys might all die. Well, not all die, but the general might die anyway. There we go. Javi throw. 
got a decent amount of kills. Is it like 53 men? It's down to 41. See, that shows the damage done by Javis. Still hurting them. 39. Another Javi throw, please, to the Gamma Spears. No, that's it. They're not gonna they're gonna give up the chase. Oh no, Colchis, do not come back for a second by the oh, they definitely could have got another Javi throw there. There was definitely an option. Don't think they can now though. Colchis is looking to get his general out of there, I personally feel. And that's kinda like the fight outside the walls over by the looks of it, so I'm just gonna put uh, foliage back on. And you can see Kush is doing a lot of damage actually. He surrounded these silver shield swords. And now that he's been counter surrounded by Thoros Spears, but that does not matter to him. He's got the most elite swords that Seleucids can bring, surrounded and in trouble. These curves, like swords of the show tells, they'll do their damage. I mean, these are Armature sure Warriors who are showing their rear to the archers and they're getting focused down and killed pretty easily. So, I mean, Kush needs to be careful when he does this. He doesn't, he, like, he can surround stuff, yeah, that's all well and good, but, like, he will lose a lot of men doing this. Probably doesn't even need to surround. Like, these guys have plenty of armor. Like, he could kill them off anyway. His armor piercing is just good enough to kill these guys one-to-one. -one. You see, he's now actually killing archers up going to the I don't know if that was a misclick by the Slusa player, or he thought he was safe to bring them up. But these show to warriors are going to mince these archers. Dice and slice, or slice and dice. Slice and dice, definitely. They're going to get butchered. Oh my god, what a... I hope, I hope they don't have any more ammo, because uh, that would otherwise would be a real loss in ammo there. Uh, these Thoros Spears are actually losing, even though they're surrounding a Shotel unit. Well, they were. They're actually going head-to-head -head now. Poor Thoros Spears. Uh, they're actually still holding this line here. I'm surprised they like, decided to hold here and not just hold these two little smaller choke points. I know if they hold here, like uh, it stops Kush getting flanked, but Kush really should just fall back to this spot as well. But it's an absolute mess down here. It truly is. These Illyrian Marines, though, for their price, are a solid unit. Definitely, if you have the option to play uh, Aridai, I definitely recommend trying it. They are a really fun faction to play. Illyrian Hoplites losing here. There's Noble Swords doing their, doing their bit. Sword followers coming up. They've got plenty more troops they want to set up. But look at that noble sword unit in the back, getting Javi by Illyrian Marines. Another faction that I think's got a pretty decent amount of like Javis is Aridai. Their Illyrian Marines are pretty sure have loads of like ammo for like Javis. I might be wrong. They just seem to have a lot. Or it might just be because all their units have Javis. I mean, most Rogue Two units have Javis anyway. So I shouldn't really even comment on that. This is very much the Javi total war. If you don't have a Javi in this in this total war, you're probably going to lose. But yeah, these noble swords are being held back by much inferior units. These Illyrian Marines holding them back, and the like noble swords are losing a lot of men because of it. Aridai though is running low on troops. He's now just got his uh, general into combat here. Well, he's not quite into combat. He's about to go in. He's got these uh, slave singers. I hope he's uh, using these guys as much as possible. He's actually got a little uh, throw of spear unit here that's rallied as well. I want to get that inside. Kolk, as you can see, he's uh, given up his assault against like Aridai's flank, and he's now just come around here to support against um, like the like with the Slucids and uh, Getty. He feels like this is a better area to break in. I'm not so sure. I think if you carry on assaulting here, like you can see, Aridai is almost like out of men. If you attacked here, there's just slingers. Uh, obviously, Bowie, I could possibly throw across a few things, and Pergamon's now arriving. So Pergamon can now bulk up any areas. Carthage, obviously, as well, needs to start uh, getting a move on. He's actually going to land his towers in. I don't know if he really needs to. Possibly might want to, just to get, like, just so more units can come up. Because it is getting a bit clogged up here. 
And Kush is killing anything that lands. Uh, you've got Royal Peltas, uh, Peltas that are going to be the next up. The brave few men are going up through this way here, and they're going to have to face 32 Shotel Warriors. Look at them. They're ready. They're waiting for this burning on this burning tower. Anything coming through. Imagine like, climbing this burning tower. It is so close to going down. It's fire damage is 862%. It's pretty close to going down. You would not, you'd be like, nah, I'm okay. I'm just going to go up the, the actual working towers, like these ones here, which are like barely damaged. They've got Eastern Archers inside now. Have a Colchis. And they still have ammo. Don't know if that was really a good idea. If, like, the defenders have managed to break through, this is another arch unit at risk. Yeah, these guys have their bows out, so they still have ammo. And they're getting up a second unit as well. They, they feel like they're entrenched in here now. I wouldn't be so sure. Sword followers now getting focused down. I mean, they are pretty much, like, breaking through. They are nearly in. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be close. Perg will now bring it in his reserve, so it could be a good relief. Personally, I feel like they need to get this tiny little unit of Thor Spears back in. Every man's going to be needed in this front line here. And the general now for Aridai is in combat. He's winning his fight as well against these heavy spears. No surprise there. It's a very elite uh, hop fight unit against a not so elite spear unit. I think Gese is such an underrated faction, though. I feel like they're a really solid faction. And if you have the right funds, you can bring, like, a good Noble Swords, uh, like, army. And just spam them out. And, like, their Dacian bows aren't terrible, I think, either. I personally find when I'm, like, going up against them, like, they're Dacian heavy bows. Like, if you focus fire with, like, all of them on one unit. I know, like, you can do this with any unit, like, any arch unit. But, like, these Dacian heavy bows seem to rip a unit to shreds. Uh, if they like focus fire with all of them or just even like two or three they can rip you into shreds I think they're quite good so yeah I, I definitely if you, can get, if you haven't already I definitely recommend give Gete a try this foliage is uh, getting in the way a little bit but we'll survive I don't think they're going to break through here though Gete because they have spears spears are more defensive that's why I was surprised they brought so many on attack you want your spears if you're like Bowie Eye right now not if you're, uh, not if you're Gete. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be a bad thing if you're Bowie Eye to play swords. They're breaking a lot of these uh, armored spears, here you can see. These Eastern Archers are actually breaking as well. 90 men! Broken. Don't know how they broke quite. Uh, maybe just got in Javi down or charged? I'm not really sure. Because this entire front nearly for the attack is breaking. I mean, there's some Bowie Eyes that are breaking, but there's a one, two, like, yeah, one, two, three. I think there's at least four or five that broke there. Um, which is kind of concerning. The general now is in here for uh, Infogete. He's sent in his general, and he's he is out of men to be fair. And look at that! The Thor of Spirits attacking the uh, Dacian heavy bows. Very nice little play there, trying to kill as many of these archers as possible. Not a bad idea. Look at this guy! What a brave man to stand! And he dies for being brave dies for being brave and having a pair of balls. And here we some, go some Colchian nobles. This is some uh, decent spear infantry. It's the best infantry that uh, Colchis can bring. And they're going to go in and just clear up this tiny unit of Thor Spears. So yeah, best spears now in the game. Uh, well, not best. Best Colchian spears anyway. Uh, in the game for, uh, for Colchis. I don't know what the best spear would be possibly in the game. Probably one of the Macedonian or uh, like Seleucid one. Maybe the Gemma Spears. I think a Gemma Spears on their day can be some of the best in the best in the game. Maybe Ariadai. Ariadai got some pretty solid spears. Who knows? Who knows? Looks like uh, Pokemon is going to be facing off against uh, Carthage again. He's going to face his old foe. He's got all these like, look at this. An entire line. Of the Gemma Spears. This is a line of the Gemma Spears you would not want to be facing. It's a solid line. Solid. It goes on and on and on and on. Beautiful. Kush is looking a bit low on stuff, but he's nearly beating his opponent, um, Seleucid. So if you say, like, everyone's going up against him, so Bowie I kind of went up against Gete. 
Bowie Eye's basically being Gete. Gete's down to like two, three units. Um, yeah, well, just his archers. He's got nothing offensively. Um, Pergamon's kind of been going up against uh, Carthage. I think that's an undecided fight yet. Kush has basically uh, defeated uh, Seleucids. And you can see here that Kush is actually falling back. As is Pergamon by the looks of it. Um, and then you'd say Colchis has been going up against Ariadai. And I think that's kind of undecided as well. Though it looks like I'd say Colchis might be Ariadai. But obviously like Colchis has been helping up against Bowie Eye. And Ariadai has been helping up against Gete as well. So like this, this fight's kind of like a more of a 2v2 than a 1v1. Like Kush has basically exclusively fought Seleucids. And Pergamon has definitely exclusively fought Carthage. And they're now exclusively fighting again. Look at them down here. And that's what I always, like, if I'm always attacking um, on Rome 2, I always, like, try and insist that everyone attacks on a 1v1 basis. Because on a 1v1 basis, 9 times out of 10, the attacker's going to win because he has more resources to work with. Um... Obviously, some maps don't, like, ordain it. Like, you are going to be, like, forced to do, like, a 2v2 while, um, like, the other areas are 1v1s. Um, but, yeah, like, you always want to try and stretch out the your, like, your opponent as much as possible. And attack on as many walls as possible. So they have to stretch their, their, like, fewer men on a longer line. And you'll find holes in eventually. Polky and Nobles now in here against uh, Pergamon. So Pergamon's no longer e exclusively fighting... Uh, Exclusive fights in Carthage. She's also thrown in troops here. This is Pick Peltas. They're actually pretty good in combat. These guys are actually pretty good. So they are a very good, uh, like, versatile unit. They have a uh, good, decent melee. I mean, not when they're getting rear charts like this, though, by Colky and Nobles. They will not fancy that fight at all. But they also got, obviously, a lot of Javis. So, they're, yeah, they're pretty good. And you can see Colky is now finding holes in the line. This Colky and Noble just needs to push through there. And they're overwhelming these uh, sword followers a bit. I mean, I say that. I'm not really sure, actually. Overwhelming wouldn't be the word I'd use. I think they're just slowly killing them off. These sword followers are probably are much, tired, uh, much more tired than these Tolkien nobles. Which have got some awesome helmets, to be fair. I wonder if these were, like... Since we covered the New World, like, mod recently. And, like, the Amazons are in that. Um, and, like, I wonder if the Amazons, like... Could have like sort of helmets like that. I think they do. Like, some of the Amazon units have like helmets with like wings on. I wonder if that was like stolen from the Colchian uh, models. Quite possibly. These Colchian nobles here, they're getting uh, shot in the back by uh, the uh, bowmen here. Still don't care. They're still winning. If I was, uh, I would not be firing on these uh, Peltas if I was station heavy bows. Maybe shoot these other bows here, like these uh, Celtic bowmen. They need more possibly killing. They're actually getting uh, sent into the rear, so they must be out of ammo. And they are starting to fall back of the defenders. It is time to retreat, they decided. It's time to go. And yeah, those Celtic Bowmen are probably going to get just minced pretty quickly. And you can see uh, they are all falling back. I mean, they actually have got a coalition of all of the players still. So that's nice to see. Reassuring that also that Bowie Eye has... I don't know where they actually have disappeared. Oh, they're all like at the front now. But yeah, he's got a lot of Oathsworn units. That is reassuring. Fresh Oathsworn. Uh, I mean, he's going to need them because a lot of Carthage's units are still fairly fresh in numbers. Uh, like, what survived anyway? They've got pikes, have they not? Uh, yeah, Carthage brought African pikes over here. So they're going to be huge. I think they're the only pikes uh, in the game. Maybe these... Uh, oh, no, Silver Shield pikes here. Um, these are obviously going to be very key as well. I don't think Colchis has brought any... I don't think they can, actually. Can they bring pikes? I'm not sure. I think they can. Maybe like low tier pikes. I might be wrong. Someone can let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm sure someone, someone will. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's just really Gete that uh, is out for the uh, for the attackers. But most importantly, they still have their archers. They have all their archers, which is very useful. And it looks like it's going to be the sword followers. They're going to be the first to stand. It looks like Aridai's general might be first in as well. He has only just got his general left. His slingers, if you can get up on this uh, this slope here, it's a really nice angle for the slingers. Might be worth trying to kill this uh, Seleucid general as well. I mean, Seleucids haven't got much left, but um, if you can kill their general, I guess that uh, Silver Shield Pike unit would be pretty useless because as soon as it got close to the front lines, it'd probably break. 
I'd say, well, you can see balance power is in favor of, um, like, the defenders. But I'm not so sure. I think that the attackers have definitely got enough left that they can uh, mop this one up if they get, play this right. This poor soul follower unit in here getting just rear charged by Noble Blood Cavalry. Oh no, it's Cafrax, sorry. They uh, said some Cafrax in. I thought it was Noble Blood Cavalry. What's the difference with the Noble Blood Cavalry? Um, like, what do they really look like? Oh yeah, these guys. No one ever brings Noble Blood Cavalry. I think you always bring like the one higher or like just bring Cataphrax. If you're playing like Path here, they have Noble Blood Cavalry. You usually just bring uh, like Cataphrax if you're going to bring like Cavalry. Or something cheaper. Like there's that weird in between uh, like Noble Blood Cavalry where they're just never really brought. I might be wrong. Maybe like loads of people bring them, but I just never see them. Never see them on the battlefield. They're going to get some archers and Celtic bowmen. They're going to be able to shoot into these Samanite warriors. That's a very nice little... If they can like get up onto this hill, shoot these guys down. Very nice little angle. Like I'd be using this a lot uh, if I was the defenders. If they could have archers, like spare archers. All these slingers. I mean, these slingers are going up onto this bit. But like Kush's Nubian bowmen, if they still have ammo, get them up on this hill. Could be a make or break. But it looks like it is slowing down a little bit here. I don't know how much. I'm just going to fast forward. Um, but it is slowing down as they prepare for their next assault. Like the, um, the attackers just want to see where the defenders' weak spots are. And what they're going to throw in first. This is where it gets hard on Berdigala. This, like, this map, um, Berdigala. Because like you have to assault over here and here. And like this spot here especially... They still have ammo left. It's really hard to attack. That's why I always like having someone attack here. Um, they do always have a hard assault. I feel like they always, like, the person attacking here always loses. You have to play as, like, someone like Rome or, like, Kush. Play a strong faction. Um, and you'll break through here. Um, but, yeah, like, it, the best, like, to have someone, like, attacking here. Maybe a slightly delayed is not a bad idea either. Because then they can come up this way. And then you have to attack the cat point here. And they also just kind of like ignore this uh, this slope here. Well, if you attack all from this side, you probably will, yeah, break through. I mean, look at the bodies. I'm sorry, but look at the bodies. I've just interrupted my own commentary. But this is ridiculous amount of bodies. I mean, it's actually kind of better if you zoom out and have a look. You can see, look at all the bodies laid here. There are obviously, there's like men standing up in the light like, them, so it looks like there's more than there is. There's so many here. Like, literally about two. Two, maybe two, three armies died here. Like I say, Bowie, I have still got a fair amount left, but Ariadai, uh, Gete, and uh, Colchis like, have died here. I mean, Colchis actually has a reasonable amount. But between Colchis and Bowie, I, like three, three armies have died there. Pokemon's getting ready. It looks like the salts. Oh, look like they're about to assault. Maybe they're going to send these Salmonite Warriors in first. Against these Gamma Spears, it's not a bad idea. They're going to send the pick pedal task forward, I think, first to break the charge. Yeah, they're, break they're going to let them break the charge. Actually, going on the offensive of the pick pedal task, they're actually going to fall back there again with spears a little bit more. Uh, they need to get, like, everything else back. And they there you go, the sacred band and everything else. They're just retreating. They didn't want to actually attack there. That's a bizarre one. Oh, no, here they go. Here they go. They've decided that now is the time to attack. They've been goaded in. And in they go. Imagine a lot of these uh, Samnites are going to die. They're probably going to throw a lot of javies and fire a lot of arrows into these guys. Yeah, you can see the arrows starting to come down. Uh, they're throwing like a Gemma Spear shots up here. They actually want to be shooting Dacian bows. Was that a, a whole unit or something like that? Might have been. Not really sure. But they're firing these uh, Celtic bowmen and they're firing to the side of these uh, Samnite warriors, which are losing. Got uh, more sacred bands up here. I mean, the best way to unlock these defenses for the uh, for the attackers is pipes. 
Oh, good to see Arya dies defending this little flank. This is a nice little way around that the uh, attackers could use if they wanted to. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to, say, like, sending over a couple of infantry units. You can break through here. And they could, uh, they could possibly get around. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, like, archers that they might have to deal with first. You can see here that Kush is getting ready. To... Oh, it's going to be a big risk here for uh, Colchis. Like, his general could get focused down here. He's down to 25 men. He's already pretty weak, you remember, from all those jabbies he's been taking from Pokemon. Somehow he's managed to get out of there without taking a loss. Oh, this might be the volley, though. No, kind of got missed again. Very lucky. Very lucky indeed. You can see, look at all these archers that were ready. Ready to gun him down. They missed. And yeah, they get, uh, the Agema Spear is going in now. Pokemon's fully committing against his old rival, Carthage. Who cares about the Rome Carthage rivalry? When you've got the Pokemon uh, Carthage rivalry, that's the real rival we all want to see and love. They've been fighting out here uh, even before that fight even begun. I know, that's a lie. They, they did that fight definitely begun first. But they've been fighting out here and they fought brutally. And Pokemon lost. And now Pokemon wants revenge inside the walls. And right now he's getting it. These guys are losing these Samurai Warriors. This one's winning, though. That's a bit of a concern. What's that fighting? These Gamma Spears here. This is a fairly big blob up here, though, of, uh, of defenders. I mean, there's a lot of lines of defenders, put it like that. So they could start firing some arrows in the attackers. And they've got still a decent amount of Eastern Archers, like the Dacians. Got the Cretan Archers yet of um, Carthage, which I don't think really have spent any ammo. But they also need to be careful with their ammo to the defenders. They need to save it for pikes and, uh, and generals, possibly. And, their other, and the opponent's archers. It's going to be close. <laughs> I just realized it's like Galatian Sword here. Look at that. Just got all the way through, broke through and got the Sacred Band. Cheeky little buggers. Breaking here though, Sam Knight Warriors. That's a big win there. And they're able to flank around now with these Bowie Eye and Gavin Spears. They obviously could get counter flanked here by the uh, Sam Knights and the uh, Sacred Band when they come in. But they might not care. They might just want to try and kill as many of these guys as possible. Love like the crush of units against each other. It's like Rome 2. It's like when two like huge uh, forces collide, it just then becomes like a blob of armor, color, spears flying over the top. It's awesome. That's kind of where the only action is going on at the moment. Uh, looks like, yeah, the, uh, the defenders, sorry, are being aggressive around here. And they've actually managed to get uh, Colchis's general. I don't know if he's dead. Uh, general, yeah, general dead for Colchis. Okay, that is huge. Colchis has a sizable amount of men left. A lot of Colchian nobles. Uh, as you can see, more units back here as well. And they're fairly fresh. This must be like, I don't know, three, four hundred men. Maybe more than that. Maybe five hundred. I'd say there's at least, a, yeah, at least four or five units that have over 100 men in them of Colchian nobles. And they're not going to be able to fight as effectively now. And as you can see, Osworn, we have disciples of Adabenmak, we've got Shotels, more archers, you've got Valyrian marines, and they're all going to try and flank around here. And they might be able to do it. Now that Colchis' general's dead, they might be able to rip through these guys. It's really Carthage that's, uh, like, holding on and, like, forcing back. You can see the pikes are now up though for Seleucids. They've got their silver shields in here and they're forcing back this Agema Spear unit and uh, they've fallen back rightly so. There was not a point they can hold. They need to get this Bowie Eye unit out of here. This 130 odd men just needs to fall back. But they are ripping to shred with their Javis, this Pike unit. Oh my gosh! Look at the bodies. But yeah, they're dropping quickly. They're getting the Slingers over here as well, Slave Slingers. They're actually uh, sneaking around with the Kolki Nobles here. They're going to go into the uh, Oathsworn. I don't think they can break through this Oathsworn. Colchian nobles on the offensive is not a good idea when it's against Oathsworn. 
And they're sending, sending in some of Gemma Spears now to help out. It's a general Gemma Spears as well. Don't know if he really needs to go in. He's also one probably going to hold the line for a long time. The Spears here are not even really in combat, I'd say. They're almost, I think they're almost out of combat. Oh, no, no, they're definitely in combat. These Bowie Ice, uh, like, sword followers are having a really rough time. Really rough time. Like, they try and get forward and they go, Ow! Ow! What's that spiky thing? Why do you have to fight from 20 feet away, Seleucids? God damn it. You cowards. But yeah, these uh, Bowie Ice troops losing. They just fall back. Just fall back. Like, this next defense here, like, it, do it doesn't serve all the pikes. There is a way they can flank around. If they play it right, they need to kind of be a bit more inverted. Like, like, like so, then like so. Maybe like have it almost like a C shape. Or like a V. V for victory. And then those pikes would have had a bit of a more of an issue. See over here, those Colchian nobles losing decisively. These Oswald have lost nine men. Find this Colchian noble here. It's lost a lot. I mean, the Colchis is now flanking, though, his Oswald. So the flank is now getting outflanked. Looks like uh, whatever flanking force here. Looks like Kush didn't follow through, or did he? No, he fell back. Kush decided to fall back, and now they're going to lose an Oswald unit. I mean, it is actually it's winning somehow while fighting another Kolki Nova. It might take down one of these units with it. It might take one of these ones them down with it. Still winning, my god. These Oswald, they are madmen. You, sirs, are madmen. I mean, I guess if you surrounded like this, wouldn't you? You would fight to the death. There's a fair amount of you still left. There's a lot of you left. It's like 140 guys left. They'd be like, "Yeah, we've got a chance." These Colchian people were fighting in a pansies anyway. Pansies or not, though, they are getting pushed back a bit, the the, uh, the Oswald. They are starting to lose a few more men here and there, but they're still losing this front-line Colchian noble. It's insane. It looks like Colchis is going to take it upon himself to uh, be the one to flank around here. As you can see, the archers and stuff are all gone from here, like all those uh, slingers. They actually look, aren't, as I say that, though, marching back in this direction. So maybe they have seen Colchis and thought, we've got better shots over there. But uh, yeah, Colchis looks like he's going to take it upon himself to assault down this street. They do need to attack somewhere else, really. Because if they throw everything in here, the attackers, I think they'll lose. Again, with Spears being very aggressive. Looks like Perg one's just... It's all or nothing now for him. He's like, my time is over. I'll I'll take on every fight. I mean, it's better that he's actually fighting than these Oswald. These Oswald, they need to keep alive as long as possible. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to lose here, though, are those Bowie Eye uh, Sword Followers. They've just been broken through. So they're now into the, uh, like, they could flank this, uh, the Gamma Spear. They might want to fall it back. They're actually sending forward a tiny little unit of armor show tells. I can see them killing at least, I don't know, a good few men. Oh, I say that as they get focused down. No, they, they're dying. They're dying quickly. Uh, let's have a, just check up on the Oast one here. It's now losing. God damn it. And so is the unit of Colkin Nobles in front of it, though. These brave men. I want an F in the chat for these guys. They have fought hard. I honestly thought they might do it. They might break out, but they're going to get surrounded and probably... Like, they get, they're surrounded, they're going to get killed. I thought they might break out of this unit, like, destroy this one, then kill this one in turn. But they're getting shot on the back by uh, Dacian Heavy Bows. They're not finding this fun. Yeah, they're getting killed. 53 men and they're going to break. 46, yeah, they're dead. And this Colchian Noble, I mean, they took a lot of them down with them. Like, these two Colchian Noble units, 56, 35. They killed, like, basically both those units. They're pretty useless now. I mean, I say that. Every man is going to be needed for the attackers. And the defenders. And it's now Oswald winning decisively against more Colchian Nobles. The Pikes now coming up. They need Pikes to break through this line. Sacred Band, Afri African Pikemen. They're going to have to break through. If they can kill Bowie Eye's general, that's a big win. 
Bowie Eye having the most nasty infantry left. I mean, Pergamon's got the most infantry left, but Bowie Eye's got the nasty stuff. All his Oast ones now in combat, apart from this one, actually. Ripping up these Samnite Warriors. And it, what are these. I thought Seleucus was about to just send his general head on in, but no. Mercury Noble Fires are coming up. This is the best infantry available to Carthage. Best sword infantry, anyway. And these guys can go toe to toe quite easily with the Oathsworn, I imagine. These are like the Spanish version of the Oathsworn. Obviously, Carthage occupying Africa and parts of Spain at this point in history. So they can call upon Spanish mercenaries and. Gallic mercenaries as well. No one's seen the standard recently, since you're asking. Yeah, these noble fires. Oh, actually, they're winning. Uh, technically, they're because they're combat even. But these Oswan are losing decisively. So, well, that kind of shows who will slide better. Mercenary noble fires will be Oswan. I don't know if that's just because of one v one or whether the skirmish is involved in that fight. I don't think there are. I think the Scotia firing everything in the reserve. Um, but yeah, these Oathsworn are not as good as Mercery, Armored, uh, Mercery Noble Fighters, it would seem. Interesting. Um, they could do a shooting them then, could the defenders. They could do killing these guys. Because they've only lost 30, and they've nearly killed an entire Oathsworn unit. You can see the final unit of reserves as soon as about to get sent in. But yeah, they're fresh. No, wrong spot. Send them in here. They're trying to destroy that like Carthaginian uh, flank here. Against it's more mercenary noble fighters, which is a concern to be fair. I mean, what they got here? Disciples of Atapenmak. These guys are pretty good. I mean, they don't do well when they get shot at, but they're pretty good. Get these archers out of here, man. These Nubian bowmen. If they still have ammo, that's a real loss. Uh, Disciples of Atapenmak going in against these Colchian nobles. Um, again, they don't have great armor, like I said, don't have great armor, but their attack is, like, really, really good. And they killed, like, a bunch of lions. Oh, that's very nice. That was very satisfying. They killed a bunch of lions, anyway. So they must be pretty good. And as you can see, these, uh, Colchian nobles losing decisively. Uh, these decisive out of Penmac, just nasty. And in they go, the lion men. Lion men of Kush. These guys might be huge, and they might clear up this flank. Yeah, look at that, losing decisively, losing decisively. This one's combat even at the moment. He could have done with more Carly Axemen, I think, could uh, Colchis instead of these uh, Colchian nobles. His uh, nobles just aren't good enough to break through these lines. And there you go, it's down to this final unit here. General dead, obviously you've got to remember that, so that's why Colchis' units are just not as great at the moment. I mean, they're not... I don't think Colchis really has a great army roster. They're, like, pretty good for, like, eastern factions. Like, they could go up against, like, Armenia and some of the other, like... Um, like, maybe Pergamon and uh, Ariadai. But, like, up against Kush and, like, Bowie with they're really elite units that are left. They're just getting minced. It's just easy kills for, the, uh, for Kush and Bowie Eye. I mean, talking about easy kills, uh, these Mercenary Noble Fighters, actually, to be fair, they're down to 40 men. They're having a really easy time. Well, they were at one point, not so much now. Pikes coming in, though. Oh, I think they were coming for a moment, and Carter cha changed his mind. Yeah, the pikes, I think they're just resetting up, and then they're going to go in. Going to reset up, and then go in. And the Korean archers now are certainly letting their presence be known. They still have a decent amount of ammo, I believe. So uh, they're, like, certainly focusing down into, like, the backs of units like this. Uh, o Swan unit here is winning against... Uh, Mercury Noble Fires, actually, to be fair, but I think that's a 2v1, technically. So, you can, so uh... I'm not sure. It's the, the, I think, like, it's still out on who's better. O Swan or Mercury Noble Fires. Could go either way. 
Kolki Nobles here though, starting to win. Because the decisive Atapen Mac have fallen back. I think maybe because they were losing, I think they were a really good shock infantry unit, but not so much like a prolonged melee. I could be wrong. But yeah, uh, the Kolki Nobles here just messing up these Soros Spears and uh, like the, I think the Slave Archers in here as well. Slave Slingers, yeah, there are. A uh, good charge from these uh, types of Adapen. Yeah, they're exhausted. They could do with um, just resting up a bit, and then they could charge and probably rip, uh, rip this unit apart. But it is very, very close, and it is going to come down to, well, ammo and just who's got more men left. I mean, like I said, Carthage is some really useful units like Pikes. But, I mean, arguably, I'd say Bowie Eye's got the uh, nasty units in the o -Swarm. Cretan Archers now in here though, this is a concern, so maybe they are out of ammo. I mean, looks like they are, yeah, it looks like, they, maybe this uh, Cretan Archers, no, this is Rodian Slinger, Barrel Eric Slinger here. And and that's uh, now focusing down everything at the back. These guys need to be getting a lot of kills, hopefully. They're firing over their uh, front line, and what are they hitting? They're just going for uh, Bowman back here. They've routed those Bowman, that's a big win, I guess. Cypes so out of pin Mac, yeah, charging again. These guys on a charge are really, really nice. I'll have to use it, try and use them a bit more myself. So I think, yeah, if you flank with them, and then, like, flanking and getting on the charge, it'd be really, really good. You can see they're falling back again. So I've got out of pen Mac. They probably could have won that fight. Never know. Never know. These Royal Kushite Archers, if they have ammo, they need to get on, like, here and just focus down inside these Colkian Nobles. More of them coming up. Gonna be close. The Bowie Eyes, uh, Oathsworn's now been pulled back. It's now the time of uh, the Pokemon, the Game of Spears, have a go. And they're just jabbing. I think they have been jabbing these Pikes right in front of them. I think they're out of ammo, though. Look at the sun just beating down onto the armor. That's awesome. Rome 2 still looks quite nice. It still looks really nice, I think. Even for, like, a, what was it, like 2013, 2012 sort of, like, game. It's really, really good. And the bodies, man, the bodies. And the pikes are poking through in the archers here. You can dare come after the pike. Like, go after the archers. You get a pike in the face. Archers here. Just getting chopped down by a game of spears. Easy kills. Just racking up their KD. They're actually going to try and send forward some Agema Spears. Don't know if that was their intention, but yeah, they should definitely fall them back. They're just going to run onto pikes otherwise. Um, over on this side, obviously all the slave things are starting to die to Kolki Nobles. They might need to send uh, sending some Agema Spears in this direction. Not a bad idea. Um, I'd let them possibly through. Possibly try and let them through a little bit. See if these disciples of Adapenmak can then get a better flank and a better flank charge. But there is also then a Carthaginian general waiting here, so maybe they can't let them through. It's, it's a toughie. We've got the uh, general here at Perg when he's coming back around. But yeah, his general starting to waver though. That's not a good sign. They've been casually just shooting him with the uh, Rodian Slingers. As you can see, the general, I think he's going to just try and punch a way through here, the Sluicer general. Hellenic Cataphrax is still healthy numbers as well. 68 men. He's going to, yeah, just try and punch a way through these uh, pink Peltas. Gets, well, pulls through, which is kind of okay since it's cavalry. And he's going to go after, I don't know what, probably the general here. General, oh, the general of Kush. Yeah, I mean, he's an archer unit, why not? Oh, yeah, that's a troubling sign there for Kush and the defenders. That's not a good sign at all. And you can see the disciples of Adapen Mac now coming in. Now, now going to surround him with the Gamma Spears. But does Lucid care? Probably not. He's got no army. His general, like, Cav is just, like, there to do what he can. He's pulled through, uh, like, the unit. Like, pull through the Agamemnon Spears. I don't know if he should have really done that, but you lose a lot of men when you pull through in Rome. So you lost a lot there because he's wavering, actually, for doing that. And rightly so. But, I mean, he charged that uh, Kushite general. I don't know if he's dead. No, he's still alive. Now he's going to charge back in. Do a bit more damage to these uh, O-Swan. 
Yeah, they're not even getting, he's not even getting like the attack order. He's just trying to pull them through. He's not even getting an attack order. That's just he's just desperate to try and get this Kushite general. That's just scummy, I think a bit. Like at that point, you had been trapped in combat like massively. Certainly in that second one. He's just dead, desperately trying to kill his Kushite general. And he's going to just lose his own general doing this. I don't think Kush's uh, general's dead at all, no. So it's kind of a waste of a, a really good cav unit, but it's like game. You have to tra take some risks. They're now focusing down these O-Sworn here with the Barrel Eric Slingers. These guys must be getting a lot of kills. Like, it's the only Arch unit left, or only Slinger unit left. Only range unit, I could just put it simply as. They're now focusing on the Gemma Spear General. Not a bad idea. If you can kill him, which is now wavering, they could then break all of this. And like, Pergamon has a lot of men left. They have most of the defending men left. Though they're also wavering. Like, look at this. Carthage is chain routing. It's going to go either way. You can see he's falling back his pikes. They're getting chased down by a Gemma Spears. And they're going to get, yeah, chased down. They're going to get, like, in amongst the unit. And that might be... A bit of death there for the uh, the pike unit. They're trying to go for the barrel Eric slingers, I think, desperately. But they are actually going to get in behind these uh, African pikes. And they could just, like, form a little column. They could get around the back here. You can sort of see. Uh, there's a column. Like, you can just get around here. Flank these guys. And, uh, yeah, they've sur like they've basically defeated Carthage now. Carthage has been defeated. The rivalry between uh, Pokemon and... Uh, Carthage is basically over, but I don't know. I mean, I, Carthage has been feared, but yeah. I thought they might have had it. I think, yeah, all of a sudden, like, Colchis just broke. Obviously, like, Seleucus possibly should have kept their cab, because if they, like, waited, and, uh, like, when Carthage then fell back like this, he may have then been able to get some decent charges off. Um, yeah, the pike's breaking here. There you go, the arch is gone. And just waiting on that general to die, really. If he's just going to carry on charging into a square formation... Um, I, I presume Pokemon's probably like, be my guest. Yeah, he's sending all of his spears in that direction, bar like one, to deal with these uh, slingers. And there you go, the defenders, they fought a hard fight there. Pokemon doing his little sally. He thought it might have been a bit too costly, he lost a lot of men, but it was enough to stop Carthage. And do his damage, shake him up. Colchis losing his general, I think, might be pretty huge. Because he had a lot of, like, Kolki nobles left that were fairly healthy. And, like, they just didn't fight as effectively after the like after that. And you can see the general here. It's all that's left of uh, Carthage. And it's just going to come down to that. So you imagine he may... Do, and he's just going to chain route, yeah. Probably not surprising. Army losses. General or none. And there you go. A costly victory for the defenders. Ariadai and his allies did a very good job there. So we'll end the replay and have a look at the end results. So, yeah, this was sent in by uh, Coops who was playing as Ariadai, so we'll have a look at his army first. Um, he got 124 kills with his Illyrian Noble Hoplites here. His uh, Slingers, like the price here, 103 kills is exceptionally good. His Illyrian Marines here, um, oh, they're not Thoros Spears at all, they're like Illyrian Marines, I do apologise. Oh, no, there's some down there, sorry, Spears there, so maybe I was right. Um, these uh, Marines getting 168 kills, which is pretty solid for them. I mean, they were so well upgraded, they could, like, do quite well. These uh, Illyrian Noble Hoplites here, 156, the best one. His uh, poor Illyrian Raiders that got sent out to die, five kills. And his uh, Thoros Spears get 126 kills. So not too bad there to, for Coop. So well done to him. He's a uh, member of the Discord who sent this in. Another member of the Discord uh, is Varangian Skrill, uh, who was playing as Pokemon. I knew it was him instantly. As soon as I saw Pokemon, and I knew uh, like it was there was a Sally going on, it was him. Uh, he actually had a healthy unit of Gemma Spears left. 194 kills he had as well. Um, but yeah, his best like Gemma Spear unit, I think, got... 212, I think the best one's got there. Um, so this is solid. This one definitely could have got more with like the numbers there's left. Um, his general getting 69 kills, and like I don't know if he died actually, but um, quite possibly. His pick Peltas, so 245 kills. These guys are nasty. Um, like got some really, really good kills. And his Glacian swords here, 166, so not too bad for them either. Then we have Sparky here playing his Bowie Eye. Um, his uh, Archer's here getting 138 kills. His O Sworn getting 238. Oh, 238. 233. 281, sorry. Um, did really, really well. Got some really good kills. His uh, Sword Follows here actually getting 263. They did ex exceptionally well as well. 219. Some really good kills. They're pretty cheap. And then his Celtic Warriors getting uh, 81 kills, 98. So they did okay. Nothing amazing. And then have uh, Celso Godly. 
um, who's playing as Kush. Um, his general, not getting that many kills, it's a really good archer unit, only 88 kills, they definitely could rack up nearly like 200 kills if they uh, use them rightly. His Nubian bow is getting uh, 103, 118, 148, so not too bad with them. His uh, armor show to war is 45 kills, that one there. Oh, they should definitely be getting more for the price they cost. This one getting 268, uh, 261, sorry. So that did a lot better than um, like this one. That's kind of like the normal sort of kills that they get. His uh, size was at a pen mark here, 228, uh, 226, sorry, and 247. Did really, really well. And Showtel's um, getting 159 kills. So did really well. So well done to the defenders uh, for winning and getting some really good kills. Then we have Kolkis here, played by Talon, uh, 305, who is... Uh, who did pretty well, his uh, giant ballista getting 113 kills, it was actually causing a lot of issues early game for the defenders, his Colkia Nobles 277, 361, 295, I gave them a lot of slander these Colkia Nobles, but they did pretty damn well, um, some of them, his Carly Axeman 209, 221, getting some good kills as well, so well into Talon, then we have Elk here playing as Gete, his Archer is getting 193 kills, so he did really well as well, his General 145, his Spears, yeah, I would have brought, like, maybe just more infantry, uh, even if it's, like, just poor sword infantry, the Spears just did nothing, his uh, Axe Warrior is 108, his Noble Swords, uh, 251, did pretty well. Some of them did really poorly. But yeah, these two here getting over to 200s. That's what I expect to see from Noble Swords. They're really good. Then Ghastly here, who's another member of the uh, of the Discord, uh, playing as the Lucids here. Hellenic Cataphracts, 212 kills, did really well. Uh, his Giant Blister also getting over 200 kills, uh, 239, did really, really well. Uh, his uh, Syrian Heavy Archers did really well, 135. His uh, Royal Peltas, only 121. His uh, shield bearers are 74, his pikes 100 and, well, 100 dead, and his silver shields only get 124. For the, the amount they cost, you better just bring more th uh, thorax swords. Though his thorax swords did poorly, only getting 37 kills, but they were fighting Kush, which they don't do well against, and then thorax spears 146. Then we have SAS, uh, black boy, uh, who's playing as uh, Carthage. His... Uh, yeah, his Belarix thing is here, 252 kills. That's the best I think I've ever seen them do. His archers all getting into the 200s. Look at that, 242, the best one. Uh, his pikes not doing so well, only getting 65 kills. His Libyan infantry, 157. 283, so that's really good there. Noble fighters here, 145, 202. Some solid kills there. And his Samurai Warriors, 161. And his Sacred Band, 106. So not too bad there either. But there you go, guys. That is the battle. If you enjoyed, do remember to leave a like. Subscribe for new around here. And leave a comment to show your support. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.